Today we have the 2021 Chevrolet Tahoe, completely redesigned for this model year. It is bigger, has more legroom, more cargo space, more tech, and still a lot of the things that you liked in the last generation. Today we're gonna to take a full detailed look, look at everything on the outside, the inside, and go for a test drive and see if this is the new three row king. I've included timestamps to all the different parts that we cover in the description below if you wanna skip around. But before I start this off, I wanna give a big thank you and shout out to Britain Chevrolet in Greenville, Texas for letting me take this out. They've been letting me show you vehicles for a couple of years now and they are very generous, very helpful with getting this set up to show you guys. If you're in the DFW area, please be sure to check them out. I'll put their information in the description below. All right, so starting off on the exterior of this 2021 Chevrolet Tahoe, there are a lot of differences, a lot of things to cover. So first of all, this is larger in many ways compared to the last generation Tahoe. There are six trim levels, which is also different, ranging from the LS to the high country, which we have right here. So starting out on the front, taking a look at the front end, you've kind of got this big, bold, high country grill. It really stands out, it's pretty shiny. You also have active aero shutters in that grill to help with efficiency. As you can see over here, you have the same kind of headlight design, basically taken right off of the Silverado with that slim upper headlight and then that daytime running light that's acting as the blinker right now. That looks pretty sleek. I can't wait to get a night review of this vehicle. And then, so to my surprise, we don't actually have fog lights hopefully these headlights do a good enough job i'm sure they do and we have this option for the black chevy emblem and i think it looks great paired with the black the actual black tahoe one more thing taken from the silverado is that you have actual air curtains where air can pass through right there going over to help with efficiency and aerodynamics and of course this is the black color on this tahoe there are several different color options the body style is still similar but more modern and more sleek and I'd love to know what you think. Leave your comments down below. Now, as we take a look at these wheels, the wheels on the Tahoe will range from, the, from 18 inch on the lower trims up to 22 inch on the upper trims. And we actually have optional 22 inch wheels right here. These black ones are not what comes standard. They were actually added as from the dealer as an option. And I think they look better than the regular wheels. And they look great with this black Tahoe. Of course, you've got the high country badge, basically telling everybody you have the highest and most expensive trim of the Tahoe. You've got the body colored mirrors, turn signal in those mirrors. They are automatic dimming on the driver's side. They can power fold as well, and they are heated to help with the winter. You do have some chrome that kind of runs around the windows, a little bit of that on those door handles as well. And then there's something neat about those running boards that I'll show you in a little bit. And dimensionally, the Tahoe is six inches longer than it was before. So you get a longer wheelbase, an independent rear suspension instead of a solid axle in the back. So this is gonna have better handling, better ride comfort compared to the last generation. And there's even magnetic ride control on these upper trims, which basically will give you the ultimate driving experience compared to the rest of the Tahoes. I definitely appreciate how the Tahoe retained its body style. That is what makes it a Tahoe, this full-size SUV. As you get to the back, one thing to note is that this trim piece kind of running across with Tahoe in the back, that's pretty unique as well as this quad tipped exhaust. So it's a dual exhaust with quad tips. That looks pretty good on this Tahoe, in my opinion. That is only on the upper couple of trims. You have LED tail lights with Chevrolet actually written inside of them, but you do get incandescent turn signals back here, which is a little surprising for the upper trim. But still, I think it completes the look for the Tahoe. What do y'all think of the design? Let's go ahead. When you get to the cargo area of the Tahoe, you have a hands-free lift gate with emblem projection on the ground, the Chevy emblem. You have a lower load, load floor and significantly more cargo space behind the third row. Behind the third row, you'll get 25 and a half cubic feet, 72 and a half cubic feet when you fold that down. And then with all the seats folded, you get 122.9 cubic feet, even some extra space, storage space under the third row area and a full size spare tire under the vehicle. So overall, just a massive area, big improvement over last year. The key fob for the 2021 Tahoe is the updated version. It is a smart key system with push button start and remote start. You can open your tailgate, got the Chevy logo, and overall the durability feels much better than the last generation. So when you get up to the vehicle, you have push button to lock or push button to unlock. And then you actually have a dealer installed option where there's a Chevy emblem that projects down on the ground. And we have these deployable running boards that actually have perimeter lighting. There's a little light strip 
that projects down on the ground and I will have to show you that at night. Typically the High Country gives you fixed black running boards but when you open up the door on these, like I said, they do automatically pop down. As you hop into the front seats of this High Country Tahoe, you're going to get the High Country badge on the headrest and a little bit of the contrast brown stitching that you're familiar with with High Country trims. Now for those of you with mobility issues, on the passenger side you get a really nice large grab handle. You don't have that same grab handle over here but you have this handle and those deployable running boards so it shouldn't be too bad getting in here. And in later production model Tahoes with the air ride suspension you can have it so that your Tahoe will actually lower to give you an easier entrance to get in. So that's pretty cool. The seats that we have here are the perforated leather 12-way power seats including 4-way lumbar support for driver and passenger. These seats are also heated, ventilated, they have two position memory settings in addition to that. The steering wheel is also leather mounted and it's power adjustable for tilt and telescoping and this is also heated on our model. In fact, this is actually an automatic heated steering wheel so when it's real cold, you start the vehicle, it's going to heat up right away if you wanted to. And overall, there's a lot of space in the Tahoe. Full size SUV, full size space. I don't feel crammed in any way possible. I'm five foot nine, so I never really feel cramped, but the seats have a little bit of bolstering around the bottoms and a little bit around your body as well, and the headrests are in a good spot so they're not intrusive. I would like to see maybe a little more softness or plushness to the seats, but they are brand new leather, so maybe they will loosen up a little bit, but they're still comfortable in my short time in here. The interior of the Tahoe is definitely completely redone, but there are similar characteristics from the last generation, but definitely still a lot of new things that I think you will like. And overall, it's a nice, spacious, and roomy, and comfortable area with some nice materials spread around. Right off the bat, looking at this door panel, the entire upper portion has some soft material here, up there, nice large armrest. Even this little piece and this little piece are nice rubber, so if you actually touch those, it feels nice. You've got automatic one-touch front windows, one-touch down for the back, not one-touch up, which is a little surprising. And then you've got uh, power folding functions, your memory settings, things like that. And as you can see, my bottle fits down there. You've got good storage bin below, so overall, practical door. Now right to the inside, you've got a lot of different controls. You've got your parking brake, lane keeping system, parking sonars, turn your auto stop start off, lots of different stuff. Your head up display controls, even the trailer brake control over here, so that's good to see. Um, you also have interior lighting, exterior lighting buttons here, four wheel drive controls, and the auto is actually something that's really handy. If you're in a situation where you have constant switches between dry pavement and wet pavement, or maybe dry pavement and icy pavement, put it in auto and it will change between two wheel drive and four wheel drive. So it's kind of like an all wheel drive system uh, when you have that to where it automatically changes. Otherwise, just keep it in two high or four. And then this is actually your drive mode button. So you turn that, go to tow haul, off road, sport and normal mode. And then as we look right in front of us, we have the optional 15 inch head up display. So this is a massive head up display. You can move it up and down. You can completely get rid of it if you want to. It's in a really nice location as well. The information on here can also be changed. So using the info button on the head up display section, as you can see, you can even see some off-road controls. You can just have your speed, your safety systems like the radar cruise, all that. So that's pretty neat. As you take a look at Chevrolet's steering wheel, we've got our heated steering wheel button. You've got cruise control buttons over here, your front collision as well as controls for your information display, voice, and then you've got radio controls on the back of each side of the steering wheel. The steering wheel is leather wrapped. It is a comfortable steering wheel. It's fairly soft and not too gummy or anything like that. I wish there was maybe a little bit of thickness up in these corners, but still comfortable. You do have rain sensing windshield wipers, and then you'll find a familiar view up here. You've got a couple physical gauges and then the eight inch screen in the middle, which you'll get on upper trims. Otherwise you'll get a 4.2 inch information display. The information display is very similar to what you see on other GM products. You've got some trip computers. You've got a lot of other vehicle information, which can be really handy and you can customize and change what exactly you see on here as well. Audio, navigation, your phone, and then settings that you can change through here pretty easily, all using the steering wheel. Now, one of the big changes is this infotainment display and the shifter. So let's look at the shifter. It's a push button shifter. 
you've got park and then you pull back for reverse or pull back for drive push for neutral and then you can go to low and actually manually shift gears here if you want with the plus and minus so let's go to into reverse you've got this really sweet surround vision camera this actually gives you a ton of different views i believe it's nine different views you've got a top down view this is our straight backup camera you can have it with the lines or without the lines the lines are dynamic and you can even see them move on that top down view as well so you can kind of see how much clearance you have the screen is very clear the backup camera is clear you can cycle through a so many different views and i'm not even going to spend a whole lot of time on these but you can see the side of the vehicle you really have no excuse to scrape your your rims anymore because of this camera and you can even have um, you can even look at your hitch backing up to the hitch so that is super handy and this automatically pops up when you put it in reverse now another thing that i showed you on the silverado and the traverse is this rear camera mirror so you can have it be just a normal mirror or you can have it be a camera and there's a camera on the back of the vehicle that actually has a washer so you don't actually have to wash that off and you can see perfectly clear behind you using these buttons over here you can change the brightness you can change just how much it zooms in up or down all of that so visibility is great with this plus we have blind spot indicators in the mirrors and i'll show you a better look in a second now for this year we get a larger screen you've get you got a standard 10.2 inch screen of course it looks very similar to the other gm products everything is crystal clear you can touch the screen you can change kind of your home view um, you can also use a button down here to actually cycle through things so you don't have to touch the screen like for example I'm gonna go to trailering. we have this trailering app which is really slick if you get set up so I don't even have to touch the screen in order to use the stuff if you want to access that surround vision camera you can go to that right away as well I don't have it hooked up but you have Apple CarPlay and Android Auto on here as well you can even change your climate around even though you have real physical climate controls so lots of stuff that you can do on here different settings that you can change um, even kind of customizable driver uh, settings as well in fact one thing is that this has 4g lte wi-fi plus we have wireless charging down there and wireless apple carplay and android auto so you can have those wireless you don't have to be plugged in but you got to make sure that your phone has the wireless capabilities that also gives us the 10 speaker bose system on the upper trims as opposed to a nine speaker system on the lower trims got your ac vents and then down here we have our physical controls so you can always hit the home button to go back to the home screen on that display volume tuning knob this is the one that you can actually kind of twist and push to select things on the screen you got dual zone climate control up here for your passengers so you can each have your own settings you can sync them up or have individual controls everything is really easy to use heated and air conditioned vents or heated and air conditioned seats down here as well and unlike some vehicles you can have heating for your bum and your back or just your back then below you've got a couple charging ports type c and type a usb charging port and a 12 volt power outlet in addition to this wireless charging mat or you can even just use this as a little storage bin each side of the center console gives you um, another little skinny cubby right there chevy gives you kind of the same type of cup holders they have almost the little rubber grips inside they are a little tight but they hold everything in place you still get this little phone holder or a little coin holder or something that doesn't move around because it is rubberized. Large, spacious, comfortable armrest. Move this out of the way, you get an SD card, couple more charging ports. You've got this movable tray as well. And then just a huge area below that. Plus there's a light to shine down in there, which is always handy. And then one secret feature that supposedly, I guess, is going to be coming later when these are produced later this year is that you can get it so that this entire center console can slide back and kind of give you a secret cubby. So when I get a chance to show you that, I will show you that. Another little secret cubby is right over here. It's this little door. It's interesting. It's not real deep, maybe about six inches deep or something, but you could stash a couple little things in there if you want to. You have a locking glove box, softly damped. And then up above you've got led lights you can change the um the cargo lift gate with this knob right here and then even using these buttons you can lift up or move down the third row seats that's pretty cool so 
you can pop those up without even having to go back there or you can knock them back down that's real convenient you also have garage controls up here and then we have our optional panoramic roof so it's a pretty massive roof goes all the way back to that second row and then just a quick look at visibility you've got that pillar up front it's not too bad a little bit large the b pillars on these suvs are kind of big but you've got good visibility out that second window the third window and out the back because of the boxy shape as opposed to most crossovers now when you open up the second doors the second row your running boards still pop down and you can get bench seats or captain's chairs we have the captain's chairs in ours so you can have a seven or eight passenger seat configuration and there is more room for the second and the third row so don't mind looking at the reflection of me but we have these optional screens in the second row these are massive screens these are actually 12 and a half inch screens you've got the hdmi hookups back here you can have whatever you want on here you can turn it on from the main screen up in the front and you can even have navigation so you can literally have a backseat driver here for you so they can see the navigation so they can kind of tell you what's going on and the person over here can have their own thing whatever they want going on so you can have different things on each of these one big bonus is that there is more legroom even in the second row compared to last generation sitting behind myself i've got a ton i can sprawl my legs out that is very comfortable big open center area since we have the captain's chairs and you've got these folding armrests as well. There are a couple of cup holders there. You've got your own automatic climate control back here. We even have heated outboard seats on these upper trims, a couple of USB and HDMI ports, and a three-prong outlet. And with that movable center console that I'm gonna show you later on in later production models, there's gonna be a little hidden storage area that pulls out at the bottom. Our AC vents are up there, which I actually prefer as opposed to the ones mounted behind the center console. You've got a hook and you've got LED lights up above. The door is just like it is in the front. You've got a couple storage bins. The only thing that I would maybe like to see is like a pull out sunshade like you see on some crossovers for your backseat passengers. Now, as we hop into the third row, there's a couple different ways you can move these seats. So first of all, while you're sitting there, I didn't show you this, but you can slide the seat forward and backwards. You can fold the top down. There's also a little button right in here on each side. You can push that. That'll kick that seat down and it kind of tucks down into the floor so that can fold it. And if you want to get into the third row this way, you can just pull this little tab pretty easy and it pops that seat out of the way so you've got a really large area to get in now in the third row I have this seat scooted forward and I have a lot of space tons of space in the middle if you want and compared to the last year Tahoe the floor is actually lower so it's not like you have to sit with your knees hiked way up to your chest and that seat is all the way back and I can still sit back here pretty well I'm five foot nine I have no problems we had a 6'4", six, 6'5 six, guy sit back here, and although we had to move the seat forward somewhat, he could sit back here, and that's pretty tight, or that's pretty awesome, but the headroom does get a little tight for them, but for me at 5'9", I've got plenty of headroom back here. This is actually really spacious. You still have AC vents right up above your face. You've got LED lighting back here as well. Each side gets a little storage cubby and tiny little cup holder and a USB Type-C port. Now for the 2021 Tahoe, you still get a couple engine options, both of them V8. So you've got the 5.3 liter V8, which is going to be on most trims, but on the high country, like this one right here, we get the 6.2 liter V8 with 420 horsepower and 460 pound-feet of torque. It's really nice that they still offer a V8 and not just only turbocharged options. New for this year is that, just like the Silverado, those engines now have the dynamic fuel management instead of the active fuel management so there's even more variations of cylinder deactivation in an attempt to help with efficiency. Both of those engines are paired with GM's 10-speed automatic transmission but there is another option there's actually a 3 liter diesel option that's going to give you still 460 pound-feet of torque. I don't have MPG numbers on that diesel but I could guess that it would be pretty good now you can get up to 16 in the city and 20 miles per gallon on the highway, but with this four wheel drive 6.2 liter, we get 14 in the city and 19 on the highway. 
Now I was definitely disappointed by those efficiency numbers, but it's hard to really put a lot at stake with the EPA numbers. Typically turbocharged engines like found on the Expedition are gonna show up a little better with the numbers and naturally aspirated engines are gonna show up a little worse. But in real world driving, naturally aspirated engines like this will probably give you better than the EPA numbers. Towing is also a big deal for Tahoe owners. So with the max trailering package, you get a couple of different features. You get the high capacity radiator and cooling fan, a trailer brake controller that I showed you on the inside, a hitch view and hitch guidance from your surround view camera and the trailering app on the inside as well. Now maximum towing is 8,400 pounds, which actually comes with a two wheel drive version of the 5.3 liter V8. Otherwise, you can still tow over 8,000 pounds with this one. All right, everyone, we are getting going on this Tahoe. In this test drive, I'm gonna give you my first impressions of the Tahoe, because I have not been able to spend a lot of time in this new 2021 model. I'm gonna kind of tell you how it compares to the last generation Tahoe, 2020 and older, uh, as well as, you know, go over ride comfort, handling, the acceleration, all that good stuff, even, you know, noise in here. So my very first impression, just even driving to the spot that I like to film is that this feels noticeably smoother. Like the last generation was not a rough ride by any means, but it can be a little bit of a jittery ride, um, you know, compared to other vehicles with independent suspensions. Cause that had a solid rear axle, but now with an independent suspension, each wheel can independently handle bumps on their own compared to the other one. And we have magnetic ride control, which is constantly damping as fast as you can imagine to road surfaces to give you the best possible ride quality and handling. So that is 100% noticeable, especially going over uneven pavement, broken pavement, and the fact that the wheelbase is a little bit longer, the front and back wheels are further apart, that's gonna give it more time to settle out any other bumps. Now another thing is that, as with Tahoes, a lot of you probably like Tahoes and big SUVs because you have a really nice big commanding view of the road. Visibility is good across the board. You can see over the hood fairly well. It is a big brawny hood still, but you've got a good, good view from this Tahoe. Now we'll get on it in a little bit, but in terms of acceleration and throttle response, this 6.2 does a really nice job. And this is paired with the 10 speed automatic transmission. Um, I haven't been able to spend a whole lot of time with the 10 speed uh, in these GM products. So if I can get a longer detailed or long term tester uh, for like a, at least a week, then hopefully I can report a little bit more on that. But we'll talk about how it is in this test drive. Getting on the brakes, the brakes do feel a little soft. Not like they are bad brakes, but for the size of the vehicle, they maybe feel a little bit soft, but it's hard for me to compare because I just got out of a Fiat. <laughs> so completely different driving experience. But again, still with some of these road surfaces, the Tahoe it just feels so smooth. I think that that is 100% what GM was going for was better ride quality, better handling. And so far, they've done a great job. Now just with a little bit of throttle, That was quick to respond. Just a quick downshift and go, and that V8 sounds nice. You've got that big V8 in here. You can get the somewhat smaller V8, the 5.3, which is still good size, uh, in the other Tahoe trims, the lower trims. But it's nice to know that GM is still going with a naturally aspirated engine, a V8. It's just nice to see, because the Expedition doesn't offer a V8 anymore. Now this is a dealership vehicle, so I'm not gonna romp it around, but let's get on it. Just in that acceleration, that, that was very smooth getting going. That transmission had no, no trouble with the shifts. And I'm up to a higher speed. This road surface is not necessarily the quietest road surface, but this is a quiet ride. All of the GM products lately that I've been in have been nice and quiet, which is always appreciated. The surprising factor though, is that this is not actually laminated glass over here. Not the double pane glass, it is thicker. Uh, so I'm not sure if they treated it with anything. The front windshield for sure is the acoustic laminated glass that's nice and thick and helps suppress wind noise. So if I can get this again for a week, I'll give you some, some decibel ratings on a couple different road surfaces. It's 
just very nice and smooth. And this road that I'm getting on gives us a lot of waves, a lot of bumps. So I'm gonna kind of get a good feel for this suspension and just how comfortable the Tahoe feels. So far, so good. Hope this doesn't make you sick with all the movement here, but. And one thing that you've got to notice or one thing that you got to pay attention to is the lower trim Tahoes give you 18 inch wheels, which is four inches smaller than the wheels on these upper trims. The middle trims, I believe, give you 20 inch wheels. The bigger the wheels are, typically, the little bit of more noticeable, the more noticeable that the bumps in the road are. And that's because there's smaller rubber on the tires. They're a little skinnier, uh, so they're just more noticeable. They pick up more of that, that noise. There's not so much rubber to uh, basically kind of deaden out the bumps, but this Tahoe is still doing a nice job with the big wheels too. So, and this has the magnetic ride control, the continuous damping of the suspension to different bumps and road surfaces, and it's still doing really nice. Now I'm backing up and it is really nice to have the surround vision camera. Uh, that is That definitely comes in handy. There's tons of views on there too. The shifter is something to get used to. Obviously you don't have a column shifter, you don't have a floor shifter or a dial, you've got push button. So leave your opinion on that. What do y'all think of the sound of that V8? You definitely gotta love that. You don't get that in many vehicles anymore. But this, so this is a rougher road surface. There's a lot of rocks and road noise. And in the Tahoe, it is quiet. Like I said, if I get one for a week, I will give you decibel rating so you know just how quiet it is compared to other vehicles. But I'm happy with that so far. And especially the ride comfort. The biggest takeaway is the ride comfort and even the handling for a big vehicle, this is pretty responsive. We're gonna go around a corner in just a sec. We don't really have a lot of corners and turns around here, but we'll see how that feels. One thing to note is that you get a lot of standard safety tech uh, with the GM products, but a couple of the more common and popular things on some vehicles are the radar adaptive speed changing cruise control and the lane keeping system. Those are options. We have them on here, but they're not on every Tahoe. So one thing to keep in mind. As we take a sharper turn with these big vehicles, you definitely get a little bit of body lean, but that was competent. I'm sure the magnetic ride control helped us out with that. In fact, I'm gonna put us in sport mode. Little dial over to the left puts you in sport mode. It's gonna make it more aggressive driving. And as I let off the gas, it's holding the RPMs up a little more than normal. So you get on it, it's quick to go. It's a pretty quick revving engine. So like I said, this is a dealership vehicle. I'm not gonna drive it like, <laughs> like it's mine. <laughs> but uh, I hope you get an idea. This is a pretty spry. This 6.2 liter is the engine that you want if you want the most power. Uh, you still have great towing capability with that 5.3 liter though, so don't discount that one. Um, it's not gonna feel as competent, but you can still pull just as much with that one. Now ergonomics wise, in my short drive, I really like where everything is. The shifter is just easy right here, kind of like column shifter type reach, uh, and it frees up some space down here. All your AC controls, your screen, all that good stuff is easy to grab. And in terms of the weight of the steering, it's kind of a medium middle of the road. It's not the type of steering to where you can like turn it with a pinky and it's like there's no feeling to it, but it's not as if you're wrestling with the steering wheel either. It's, it's a good balance. I think most of you will find this to be just perfect in what you expect. Now let's go ahead and wrap things up on the Tahoe. So to wrap things up on this 2021 Chevrolet Tahoe, it is bigger has more space, it's got a more comfortable ride, it handles better, and it still has a lot of the things that you liked in the last generation. In my opinion, Chevrolet did a lot of things right. Of course, there's a couple little things that could always be changed, but you still have Cadillac up above them where you can get even more stuff. But really, when it comes to full-size three-row SUVs like this, I think this new Tahoe for 2021 is the new king. Leave your comments down below on what you think of this brand new Tahoe. Be sure to watch some of these other videos, subscribe for weekly reviews, and again, a big thank you to Britain Chevrolet. Have a great rest of your day.